of Pfizer, Albert Barala, says that you'll likely need a third dose, a booster shot, within 12 months of, the, of uh, being fully vaccinated. Barala has also raised the possibility of an annual revaccination, which means that you might need injections every six months. Now, does this mean that other vaccine makers will soon follow suit? Here's a report. They called it a game changer. I think this could possibly be the one game changer that we've all been waiting for. They have now changed the rules. The CEO of Pfizer, Albert Borla, has said a likely scenario is that there will be a need for a third dose, somewhere between 6 and 12 months. And then from there, there will be an annual revaccination. But all of that needs to be confirmed. A confirmation is awaited. But the question is, why do we need a third dose? Health officials say the emergence of new variants is the primary reason. The Wuhan virus has more than 12,700 identified mutations and counting. As the virus mutates further, the protection from two doses could likely wane over time. In such a scenario, a booster shot could ensure the immune response persists. Several vaccine makers are conducting clinical trials for a third dose. In January, Moderna announced that it would develop an upgrade to its two-shot vaccine. Third dose is likely to be available by the third quarter of 2021. Bharat BioNTech is also conducting clinical trials for a third dose of Covaxin. Once approved, the booster dose could be given six months after the two doses have been administered. But the billion-dollar question is, how long will vaccine-induced immunity last? Researchers still haven't been able to come up with a time frame. Vaccines for diseases like measles, mumps and rubella generally confer lifetime immunity. But vaccines against long-established diseases like hepatitis A, pneumonia and tetanus need booster shots. In the case of the Wuhan virus, researchers don't know which camp it will eventually fall into. They say, when we have a better idea of the duration of immunity provided and of the way the virus mutates, only then can booster shots be tailored to ensure consistent immunity. Bureau Report, we on. World is one. Now, in a shocking incident, the government of Namibia has rejected the visa application of twin daughters born to a gay couple through surrogacy in South Africa. Take a look. Namibian Mexican gay couple Philip Lowell and Guillermo Delgado who had applied for legal documentation before the arrival of the newborn kids, say that Namibian authorities are now demanding proof of a biological connection between the newborn twin girls and their adoptive parents. Lorne and Delegado argue that there is no legal basis on which the authorities are demanding proof of a biological relationship with their adopted daughters and go on to say that they are being discriminated against for being a same-gender couple. And there's also no basis um, in law that states that there has to be a biological link. So this requirement um, would have never been asked from a heterosexual couple or from a single mother who gave birth in South Africa and who comes to Namibia with a South African birth certificate. So, so um, that's where we believe it is uh, a matter of discrimination of us being a same-sex couple that suddenly, you know, this requirement is, um, is, is brought, brought forward. The, pregnancy in our case the couple is now pinning its hope on a Namibian High Court ruling, um, you know, scheduled for Monday to at least acquire temporary documentation for entering Namibia. So we believe that that is really where at the core of this, this particular case is, is, a, is a gross human rights violation. Um, you know, as I said, discrimination on the basis of us being a same-sex couple and as such not considered um, a family. And so the, the, the constitutional right to family is, is being denied, um, the right to um, non-discrimination is, is, um, is being violated and, um, and you know, the right of, of the children. 
The Namibian government has, however, denied the allegations of discrimination leveled by the couple. The government told the court that the twin girls were not issued travel documents because their entitlement to Namibian citizenship by birth has not been determined as of yet. When the matter hit the court, a crowd of activists rallied in support of the twin girls before the court building. In a separate case, the couple's first child, who was also born through surrogacy, is still fighting for a Namibian citizenship. But the couple say they are positive about the upcoming verdict. Bureau report, we on World is One.